The last two months have been very busy for the Hobart Chargers with signings and announcements galore as we come to you for our NW show here in Hobart. Hello everyone, welcome to Chargers TV. Roll Riggs, Justin Bryan alongside you here. As I said, it's our NW show and JB, we've finally made it to the end of the year. Yeah, finally made it to the end of the year. An interesting year, so to speak, but no, it's good to be there into the festive season on what is a very hot Thursday afternoon in Hobart. Going to be a scorcher of a summer and no doubt a scorcher of a pre-season with the Chargers. Summer is truly here and and well, JB. All right, let's get into um, some news off the top of uh, top of the show straight away with some signings for the women. It's now been Shana Thompson and Shyla Hill who's been the big announcement over the last couple of weeks. Massive announcement there with Shyla Hill. Just quickly to touch on Shana, everyone knows the local product that she is. I mean, she's had offers floating around the last couple of years for her services, such as her stature has grown um, across the sport, you know, certainly across the, you know, the southeast part of the country. So it's good to see Shana putting pen to paper, staying at home, um, keeping it lo local and really wanting to grow the brand. Um, Shyla Hill, I mean, the daughter of the legendary Shane Hill, Absolutely. in her own right, becoming one of the best young women's players in this country. She's had national representative at junior level, um, and Shane's always posting videos of him. You know, I follow uh, Shane on uh, on Instagram, follow him on Twitter. He's always got videos up of Shyla playing, of her working really hard. Um, so I actually think she's going to test the character of a lot of these young girls as well to really work hard and push to the next level, which is only going to be a positive thing for this group to allow them to grow and develop and take the next step heading into season 2020. Absolutely, and, co and head coach Mark Nash, very happy with the two signings that he has so far, Joe B. And, and as he should be too. I mean, he's got two of the best perimeter players, certainly uh, in NBL 1 level. We've seen a lot of other local girls at training as well, which will complement those two. Uh, as the season goes on. But again, Shana, you know, continues to grow in leaps and bounds. Someone like Ashila is certainly going to push her to the next level as well. So I can understand why Mark is more than happy with that. A lot to work with. All right, let's have a look at the men's side of things. And in the men's, Coach Anthony Stewart has made his first two announcements in Matthew Young and Jack Stanwix, two Hobart locals back for the men's side. It's good to see Matt and... <coughs> excuse me. It's good to see Matt and Jack back. Um, there was a lot of, you know, what's Jack going to do? You know, Jack's a pretty laid back, relaxed mm. kind of guy. So is, so is Matty in a sense. But to have Jack back on the floor is going to be outstanding. Um, his last 12 months have really seen his game develop and grow um, to be a pivotal, you know, player in Hobart basketball. I mean, he had another local senior MVP on top of that as well. So, I mean, he's had a really good year, a really good shooter. Um, and really working on, you know, playing that combo guard role as well if he needs to run the point. I mean, Matty Young, who doesn't love Matty Young? I mean, everyone asks, can he grab a rebound? Doesn't matter. Um, he's sort of the character and the backbone of the side in a sense. Um, you know, he's able to, whether it's be starting, coming off the pine, you know, hitting a shot, you know, really firing the team up, you know, just some character building stuff. Um, Matt's a pretty good guy to be around. He's a pretty hard trainer, pretty hard worker. Um, he's always up for a chat with us, which is, you know, the most important part, Ronnie. So <laughs> it's good to have him there. Jack, not so much if you get a word out of Jack, it's like <laughs> yes. getting blood out of a stone at times. But no, it's good to have both of those boys back on board. And again, that real local flavour that the club's trying to drive and really build um, you know, re not rebuild the brand, but re-establish the brand and, you know, just say we're a Hobart team and we're going to be Hobart focused for great signings. Uh, absolutely. And of course, both coaches, uh, JB, still looking for their imports. And um, where do you think both coaches need the imports, a guard, a, a big, you know, where do you think they're both looking for? Well, I think bigs are certainly on the agenda for both, um, having spoken to Mark and having spoken to Anthony, you know, they've got their prospects, you know, players that they're well associated with and players that want to come back down to Hobart and play, certainly there. Having spoken to Anthony, I think he's looking at trying to get another, <coughs> excuse me, another perimeter player, you know, to sort of help run that point and help bring up these young guards, you know, he doesn't want to really, you know, push too much in the bigs department, you know, wants to allow these other guys who, you know, are reasonably tall. We've got an okay size squad there, so he's going to want um, a player to come in and compliment them. And again, you know, Mark, you know, obviously signed Shyla, but I think mm. a big is going to be key for Mark. You know, there are a lot of girls that are, you know, learning to play the four and the five, you know, who are still growing, you know, you know, physically and in their games. So um, for him to get another big around the squad would be key. I mean, there are a lot of, you know, speculation and rumours of, you know, local fan favourites wanting to come back or having yep. mm. been interested in coming back. Whether that comes to fruition is another thing. But, yeah, I think bigs are certainly on the agenda for both of these sides. Rebounding is going to be key. Um, and I think a lot of it's going to be, you know, defensive rebounding, outlet passing, a lot of run and gun basketball, use the youth age, you know, and to build the experience on that. 
um, I reckon that's what both coaches are going to be aiming for. Further announcements to come over the coming months here uh, for the Hobart Chargers and on Chargers TV. Okay, let's dive well into pre-season, JB. We've been out to a few sessions already for both the women's and the men's respectively and are good to see a lot of local uh, young talent uh, taking part in pre-season trainings. And not only, you know, local young talent that's been, you know, around the Chargers and, you know, the NBL1 programs for a while, but we're talking about, you know, players that have had outstanding junior seasons, you know, or have started to take that step into senior basketball here in Hobart. They've gone, look, I'm going to put my hand up here. I know where I want to go. I know where I can play. I want to take that next step. So, I mean, particularly, you know, in, you know, the women's program, you're seeing a lot of the younger girls coming through. Um, and the men's program, I mean, went out, I think it was last week, went out for a look, Ronald, and there would have had to have been close to 20 guys there Absolutely. just running at training there. So, you know, Anthony has a lot to pick from. You know, smaller numbers for the women's side, um, obviously, you know, the last few weeks with exams, you know, university results, mm. um, formals and whatnot, you know, the girls are, you know, obviously prioritising that, which as they, you know, 100% should Absolutely. as well. But, I mean, it's good to see, you know, that there is a bright future of basketball here in Hobart and Tasmania in general, you know, with the local talent. It's not driven by these senior players that have been there 10 years. And don't get me wrong, there have been some senior local players that have been missing because of, you know, holiday time, family time and stuff like that. So it's good to see the younger generation taking the initiative to step up and want to play the game. So, no, it's been good. It's been interesting, um, the dichotomy and mix of talent, you know, just how different personalities, you know, bump and grind and work with one another. But again... That's what pre-season's for. Build the chemistry, smooth out those um, those ridges, so to speak, and you know really build some fluidity and some progress onto the program. It's been good so far, and I'm sure both coaches are looking forward to the back half of pre-season. Absolutely. That back half of pre-season, JB, will not only bring in the main type of squad players that will come in, but also to once imports are announced and that type of thing, they'll be coming in near towards the start of the season, which we believe at the moment it will be an April tip-off. But the league, from what we've heard from the league so far, when we contacted them for comment was actually that they're still working out the fixture as we speak. Yeah, well, I think a lot of that is to do, you know, with venues and a lot of it is to do with the conveniences of clubs because mm. um, the last thing you want to do is set a tip-off date for two teams. You know, it's all well and good for you to have an 18, 20-league team, but if you're inconveniencing 90% of the league, it's not really effective. But again, you know, summer's going to be a good period for them to obviously iron out the creases and get all that set. I mean, they're a pretty efficient... Um, type of organisation, the NBL 1 and the NBL in general. I mean, it's why they're one of the three biggest leagues, you know, organisations in the world. Um, But you'd be looking for probably a solid fixture towards the end of January there, you know, so everyone gets a fair idea. That's, from my experience, that's usually when we sort of get a, a very good indicator on when that happens again we're still waiting on our own venue announcement so that could be Mm. also pivotal but I mean having spoken and heard the different ideas as far as broadcasting and setup in the venues this year there's probably some logistical arguments with already set venues so in ironing again ironing the creases out and getting all that sorted that's when we'll get it done and Again, you know, you never know. You might have a team that wants to pick up a new licence. They might have a team that wants to sort of change where they want to be, change their structure. So giving teams, you know, enough time over Christmas and the New Year period to get that done and settled, pretty good idea. And again, April's the expected tip-off. So here we are, fingers crossed, hoping that in four, five months' time we'll be here talking about round one. Oh, absolutely, JB. Um, do you reckon for the, if we do get the first home game or second home game or whatever it could be, do you reckon we'll get a strong crowd to whatever venue we turn up? Absolutely. Do you reckon the fans will drive yeah. out and draw it yeah, as well? Yeah, 100%, 100%. It doesn't matter where we're going to be, whether we're a stone's throw from town or whether we're down the highway. Um, there's definitely going to be a turnout because, again, the established brand of Hobart basketball, of Southern basketball, is the Hobart Chargers. And, again, you've only got to see the loyalty and the conversation you know, and the fandom that surrounds the club even when they're not on the floor um, you know, even when they're in a pre-season, you know, always got people that you see in the street, basketball related, they're wanting to talk hoops. You know, people coming to you and I asking questions Absolutely around what's going been. on. Yeah. Um, and again, getting around training, I mean, we've had plenty of coverage and, you know, plenty of noise here in a pre-season where previously we've probably been a little bit quieter on that front. Probably, you know, we've obviously been more assured of our position, so to speak. But, you know, to have that conversation ramping up in December when we're still four months away potentially from a tip-off, you know, only gives you the sort of indication there is for the popularity of the sport and the growing want and need for the charges to get back on the floor. So I think we could guarantee, I would almost guarantee a sellout to our first home game, women's and men's. Usually you'll find that, you know, the women's get sort of a half crowd builds towards the men's game. I would almost guarantee a double sellout there on our, our round one 
Yeah, round one tip off home game. Oh, there you go. You've heard it there from JB. All right, you can follow the Hobart Chargers on their social media. With our social media just kicking off the last two months, it's been unbelievable the traction we've been getting, JB. So Facebook, you... Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, all four platforms have just been riding this wave. Abs- absolutely. JB's taking the words straight out of my <laughs> mouth there. Very good. That's, that's you've got of... the You've got the names, though, Ronald, so you better let the, you better get the names out there so people know where to find us. <laughs> Righty. All right, so you can find them on Facebook. Uh, you can also find us on Twitter. It's Hobart underscore Chargers. Uh, you can find us on intra- Instagram as well too, Hobart Chargers there. And of course, you subscribe to the YouTube channel, Hobart Chargers, where our subscriptions have kept going up, JB. We're up to 258 now. We're getting there, <laughs> which is good, slowly building. I remember when I first jumped on at the club, we were very low on our subscription number yes. just because we were so minimal in our mm. media department. But again, it's to get the content out there in all avenues. So look, if you can't get a video up on Facebook or it's slowly loading, hey, jump on to the YouTube channel, vice versa. If you're not, you know, YouTube savvy or you're not up for that, jump straight on to our Facebook page and you'll find links and all that sort of stuff there. So to intertwine it and build more of a broader social media community has been really effective. And again, Instagram's been a big one for us the it last few been. weeks. Getting out mm. the training, you know, getting footage of the girls training, you know, and just little tidbits here or there. And noticed a lot of players are using our social media to share in a sense to, you know, for their own signings you know, or different things featuring themselves. So, you know, it's good as cross-promotion and self-promotion in a sense as well. Ah, it's fantastic to see, JB. All right, we're, we're nearing the towards the end of 2019 and we're closing out the decade. So we're um, we're going to reach out to a few of the um, Char- Chargers elder statesmen and we're going to get a team of a decade um, going for from 2010 to 2018. Now, we can't count 2019 for obvious reasons, of course, um, but we're going to... We're going to look at from 2010 to 2018, and and this is going to be a bit of fun, JB, because this is all, this always sparks good debate, sparks a little bit of passion. You know what uh, what what plays from each bit of team, chest, bit of chest pumping in a yeah, sense too from some people. Right? Abs- absolutely, you've been you've been with us obviously for the two two years or three years um, that we've been here from the 27 and 2018 squad. Who would you pick from men's and women's? that you would put in your team of the decade, so to speak? Well, the one guarantee I can give is that your championship side of 2018 would have a lot of contenders. Mm. Um, And 2017, obviously, pushing to the finals. But if I had to pick, I could probably guarantee definitely one player that I'd have to name out of both the 17 and 18, that would be Amathi Ang Mu. Yep. Um, Played Mm. both, you know... Pretty much won the should have won the. I'm pretty sure won the scoring title. Come second in scoring in 2017. Won the finals MVP of 2018. Although missed some of 2018 with an injury. Um, that was well documented. The fact that he was there for both. He delivered in the big moments, and you know brought a an, a brand new character to the team. You know he was probably the number one, the most loved player. Um, men's or women's uh, floating around the, uh, the city at the time. So I definitely say a moo. Very hard for me to, to filter back there on the other men's squads. You'd have more of that than mm, me, yes. Ronnie. Mm. Um, women's side, um, I think from the, the years that I've been here, I think a Shana would have to be up there yep. from a perimeter standpoint. Um, I think a Kylie would be up there. Her yep. longevity was yes. there. And a Kathleen would be up there as well. Again, that longevity, that standpoint. I mean, you know, you're mentioning two girls there that were there, you know, in that 2014 South Conference Championship, I yes, believe it was. Yes. So, you know, there's some stalwarts and they've got the pedigree that goes with it there. So they're probably the four. I mean, you go through the men's team and throw in a Trey, a Craig, you know, yep. all those guys there. I think another one, the men's, is probably going to get unsung. There's probably someone like a Cam Brown, a workhorse mm. that's been there for a while. You know, your Terry your BJs, um, players like that that have sort of been through the journey as well, you know, albeit, you know, broken up a little bit. But, you know, it'd be good to see players like that get some recognition. Again, I'm probably the most, un- of all people, <laughs> I'm probably the most unqualified person <laughs> to speak on it. But, I mean, yeah, I think it'll spark some good debate um, yeah. and it'll get some of the older the older heads, as people say, to, to get around the club and sort of really get that debate going. And, I mean, if we can get this somewhat official, that'd be awesome. Absolutely. Um, it'll mm. certainly be Chargers TV official if that, that <laughs> yeah. has any weight to it. But, yeah. no, I think it's a very interesting debate. I mean, it'd bring up a lot of new, old and familiar faces, Ron. Oh, absolutely it will, JB. So, very quickly, with the women's, I agree with the three that you mentioned here, Kylie, Sh- uh, Shana and Kathleen. I'd throw in Alex Finlayson, who's been there yeah, from day one. Of course. She was there in the inaugural Hobart Chargers uh, women's side. Um, from the men, oh, let's go Let's go through a few. So, you had Stewie in there. Stewie 
Stewie would be your coach because he's pretty much coached if, most, well, of the, if most of not, the Well, decade. if Stewie's not in there, something tells me he puts himself in there. <laughs> yes. um, who do we have? We had a Terry, we had a BJ, um, the potential of a Craig and a Trey, okay. a Cam Brown and Moo. Moo, yeah. And then if I go back into the older rosters, so Mark Nash when he was playing of course. In, the early, in the early teens of the decade and then someone like a Brandon Polk who uh, Chargers fans would remember, very solid um, uh, forward. Deborah George, another Deborah popular name. Yeah, Deborah George, Chuck Long. Yeah, of course. Uh, he was a fan favourite back in the day. Ban- Bannerbeck, yeah. Uh, yeah, he played early on as well too. So there's a lot of names we can throw in that men's side it would take hours to work out who would be in this team. So we will have a talk with some of the older statesmen um, around around the club and get their opinion. And if we can, as you say, make it official, uh, my word, we, we'd love to see that, that happen because it's always fun around this time of the, the year and when you're going into a new decade, I suppose, we're going into 2020 next year. Yeah, it's 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 fun doing these, these type of things. I mean, that could even be a matter of, you know, if there's a formal selection of even some sort of presentation on a game night yeah. or, you know, recognition like that. I mean, there's countless other things. I'm sure there's footage we could go through for, you know, top 10 plays, top 10 dunks, top 10 game Absolutely. winners, etc. Mm. stuff like that. But, I mean, if when you come to the, you know, the nut cutting, time so to speak you know to you know debate these all-time teams and stuff like that a good fun conversation and i mean even for fans you know people that are listening now i mean yes. if, if you've got suggestions and teams you want to throw in the comment section by all means go for it because i mean yeah a good talking point you know and yeah be well worth it i think well good conversation absolutely absolutely so stay tuned on on that we'll work on that as we as we get towards round one of the 2020 season and and uh keep you updated on that forefront right um jb we're gonna give your um we're gonna give you a plug here now you do a bit of uh nba stuff and a little bit of nba stuff quite a quite a bit and you, (laughs) you get a fair bit of a fair bit of um attention would we would we say let's just say um I try to provide education. They provide me with the interaction. <laughs> right. So it goes. But no, yeah, I, do, go I, do, I, do, I do a little bit of NBA stuff on the side. Um, massive hoops fan as far as the NBA product's concerned. So, yeah, I've got my own Facebook page, my own YouTube page, do my own Twitter. So, uh, JB's NBA on Facebook. I'm sure we'll probably show something up on the screen yeah, we'll here. Throw a graphic Some up. terrible screenshot of me in the middle of a facial expression as one particular <laughs> viewer of that particular channel who's a particular fan of a particular player likes to bag me out with. <laughs> right. On. But, no, yeah, so it's just fun. Just something on yep. the side, you know, always keeps the brain ticking over, you know, always seeing what's happening around the, you know, around the league and, you know, what other players are incorporating from other parts of the world. And, I mean, you're all, it's always interesting to see, particularly in the back half of the season, you'll see a lot of guys from the NBL who get picked up onto contracts and that so mm. guys like a Mitch Creek will go back over and play um, someone like a Majuk Majuk will go over and get onto a roster or you're looking at someone like an Andrew Bogut who again was you know last year went from winning an MVP here in the NBL to being you know a starter in the NBA finals granted has history there in the NBA but yep. I mean it just shows the progress of different leagues and different players out of Europe and China and stuff like that so it's really good and I mean even players who have played down here in Hobart you know who have aspirations to get into the G League of the NBA and the NBA you know it's interesting to sort of see sometimes you'll see their paths cross as well so no I, I do that for a bit of fun so again JB's NBA on Facebook you can listen to all my plugs and stuff there but daily wraps weekly players monthly lists um, monthly players, you know, highlight videos, stuff like that. So just a bit of fun on the side, running. It's pretty you good. Go. There you go. No off-season for Chobe here on Char- oh God, no. through Chargers TV. He does a bit of work on the side, which is good to see. Um, that pretty much wraps us up for end of year show. We can't really do a favourite moment of the year, JB, because... Well, um, it wasn't a moment for the year. No. Well, i tell you what, our favourite year is that we're back, Ronald. That's what it there should be. There we go. Absolutely. 100%. I can mm. guarantee you, everyone out there is pretty bloody happy that we're back as well. <laughs> yes. But again, yeah, sort of limited on information at the moment. Yeah. So, you know, we can can't really get into that half hour show that we'd really like to delve into again little snippets here or there we'll no doubt have one in the new year once we've got a few more announcements and stuff and you know gotten over this heat wave and managed to get a tan on and all that sort of stuff so (laughs) you know we'll we'll come back obviously you know probably try and get a couple of you know try and get an update once a month sort of thing as the season goes and and build into it but no it's good to be back I mean it's been a hell of a lot of fun the last couple of months since the announcement you know there's a lot of other stuff buzzing around with potential Tasmanian NBL Mm. stuff like that so you know there's always going to be news and basketball related activities going on you know but conversations like that should drive local players 
players to say, look, I need a pathway. We've got to get to the charges. This is where we've got to be playing. This is what we've got to do. You know, get out there, support your local players too at local level. That's mm. that's the next best thing I can say because yes. while a lot of mm. these guys, you know, will, you'll see sitting on the bench at Chargers games or playing minimal minutes with the Chargers games, they're busting their backsides at local level. So if you hear there's a local roster on, you know there's a player, get down there, support them, motivate them, you know, because they're the next generation, they're the next level and they're the continuation of this great club. So yeah, if there's one thing I can say going into the new year other than Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, oh, Happy absolutely. Holidays, is, mm. you know, if you've got a young athlete out there or you know a young athlete out there that wants to play the game and get to the next level, encourage them, inspire them and, you know, push them forward because this great club wants to continue growing on the basis of local talent and the more you encourage them, you know, the more players we get and the deeper the club can become. So, yeah, just keep motivating those young athletes and, you know, really supporting them on their journey. Well, we'll see, JB, and our focus for, for next year in 2020 through Chargers TV is we're going to try to get you out there and interview some of these locals dur- during the week of the seasons and then hopefully we can put those interviews up uh, on, on on the show and, and on our YouTube page as well too. So we're going to try to be more heavily local-focused going into... More personable as well. Yeah, absolutely, JB, going into... To 2020, and we uh, we're absolutely excited, and um, we're already hearing some early information about the new live streaming stuff. So we're we're kind of very excited about that. But more details to come as the season gets closer and closer. We'll also have, as JB said, we'll have updates for out um, January, probably late January, I'd, I'd imagine, because the break is coming up now. And then once our imports know what they're doing, like if we're yeah. going to get imports once their current season finishes, when they're here and stuff like that. So no, yeah, late January would be pretty good. Good, but that'll give us a good six weeks off to really, you know, delve into it and get them, you know, draw as much blood out of those stones as we can to get all the information we can to you, the fans of Chargers TV. Absolutely. Stay tuned throughout the break. You never know when any announcements are coming or presses are coming. So just stay tuned on all our socials for, for that. So on behalf of myself and JB, we wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a safe and happy new year. And in the meantime and in a long time... We're signing off for 2019, and we'll see you in 2020.